1,300 kilometers in old muscle cars. What could possibly go wrong? How to fix a broken water window 101. Challenger is the rear end. Now the rear end on this Challenger is a seven and a quarter rear end. Because this is an original inline slant six 225 car, so it had the small rear end. So instead I got this eight and three quarter rear end out of a 1970 Dodge Super Now I pulled it out of a 1966 Plymouth Brother there, and now it's going into a 1970 Dodge Challenger. So it's been around the block. And then we're gonna pull the center section just to drain the oil and also make it easier for install and stuff. It doesn't weigh as much, just pull the axles out and stuff. One thing you're gonna have to do because a V-body and V-body is not completely the same when it comes to rear end. Because the rear end mounts out here are two inches different in width. So I'm gonna remove the backing plates to get in there with an angle grinder. I'm gonna see if we can zip those off, move each side uh, an inch out, re-weld it and put it into Challenger. It has a 355 sure grip unit in it, so it's pretty good for like highway and acceleration. And it also lock up both wheels and do two black lines on the road instead of one. And yes, this thing is burnout certified as you can see right here. Spring uh, perches, brackets, whatever off, and the and the shocks here. I'm still gonna use the shocks. So we're just gonna let them dangle here for a minute, and we're also gonna use these leaf springs. I thought the other one had like bigger eight and three quarter leaf springs in the water, but because it's an original inline six car, I guess they just used this the stock spring. So I'm still gonna keep my slant six springs in this car as well. Maybe it's gonna be a little bit soft, maybe not, but then it will hook better on the drag strip. The last thing we have to move here is the brake line, so hopefully it's not gonna crack or. Whatever, I don't know, it's kind of rusty, so that's already loose because a desert car, I don't know, California car. So we're moving the whole rear end out and that's also parking brakes and stuff. And the easiest way to just remove that is right here at this junction or whatever. So you can see you have like a bigger hole down here and then it's sliced or whatever. So you just take your cable, slide it down that, run right there and out through the hole and boom. Handbrake cables are disconnected. Yes. <laughs> What I'm gonna do right now is muscle this thing up in these jack stands and then I'm gonna pull the drain plug in this thing because this thing has a drain plug. Now we are gonna clean this thing up first because I don't want to get all the kind of junk inside of it. There's so much like cake oil and stuff on it. So I actually think I'm just gonna start wire wheeling before doing all that. So let's do that first. about a drain plug is if you don't tighten it, it leaks. So what I'm gonna do now, now that the drain plug is loose anyway, is I'm gonna tilt it over the edge right here and see if we can get most of you all into a drain pan. Also to see how the oil looks, I guess, because hopefully we have an okay share grip. Maybe a little above, maybe a little above of these. Doesn't look like we got any metal or metal paste or whatever, uh, not that I can see. Looks a little worn out, but uh, we never know. We don't know when this uh, fluid was changed last, so. It's gonna be a long day or every freaking not to stock in the socket like that. Also, Rock Auto uh, cardboard box filled up with uh, dirt. It's like cat litter, it sucks up the oil, right? So, third member. Inside. Let me tell you what. 
Sometimes the easiest way to remove something is uh, just breaking it. There you go. There you go. And it's so nice when everything just actually breaks. And there you go. Okay, so we just got the rear end painted and it's looking real damn nice. It's just gonna dry off now and what we're gonna do meanwhile is uh, getting the leaf shrinks out and I'm gonna, for one, strip them down a little bit and just shoot some quick black paint on them. But we're also gonna change out the bushings because as you can see, there's a lot of play in them. They are just slopping around. So the original eight and three quarter U-bolts were, uh, let's just say, a little bit pitted and rusted and on some of these, the whole uh, threads are gone. So that's no good. Luckily I had these old school 90s, 80s uh, AFCO racing lower spring plates and also U-bolts which are nice, big and beefy. Instead of the traditional uh, like start or whatever on 8 and 3 quarter lower plate, we're just gonna go with a big old uh, fruit bolt, uh, tin grade bolt or whatever with, uh, with nylon locks and everything so that's all good to go. Well that was probably the easiest leaf spring hanger ever to remove. <laughs> Literally just fell off, nice. So passenger side, even more room because there's no muffler in line 6 stop. Nuts, break them loose and then you can pretty much screw them out with your fingers all the way. And there we go, now it's out. That is the easiest leaf spring hanger I have removed in my entire life. This thing also looks like freaking fracture, like no rust, no nothing, that's, that's insane. There you go. Oh yeah, also this bushing down here. Yep, disintegrated. Boom! We finally got parts for the Challenger. We got suspension parts, we got brake lines, we got gaskets. I actually changed out the yoke for the drive shaft as well, so we have a shorter drive shaft by one inch, because with the 8 and 3 quarter, it is approximately one to one and a quarter inch longer, like the third member itself, so it pushes the drive shaft close to the transmission and uh, I was pretty much like bottoming out on the seal in the transmission on the, on the inline 6 setup. But we got that fixed and we got like a 1 inch to 1.5 inches of play right now that the yoke can go in and out. So I also grind down like the whole suspension, leaf springs and everything, uh, leaf spring hangers, springs, perches and all that. So that's all nice and painted in black as well now. And I went ahead and bought an energy suspension kit right here, which is like 50 bucks in rock auto. And you get all the bushings and the uh, hardware needed to go from uh, rubber bushings over to polyurethane bushings. Talk down the, the big eyelet in the other end, and then we're pretty much ready to put in the rear axle. Axle wrap. <sighs> I'm stronger than the inline six. <laughs>
now, Rien is in, brakes are bled, Rien oil, got that filled up, Mopar limited slip differential, active slip and all that stuff. It's gonna be interesting to put wheels on and see how far in they are, because this is an aero rear end, uh, essentially. So the mounting curves are two inch different, but the overall width of the rear end, I don't think is like one and a quarter inch or whatever, so maybe we're getting like a half inch of backspace on each side or something, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, I just had to shower down the whole rear end, because one of the brake lines were loose, so uh, brake fluid went in everywhere as soon as it got pressure. So I don't want anything to rust anything because I just painted everything, so uh, water hose. Good day, good morning! And we are headed to Power Me. So we're headed on a 1000 km road trip right now, all the way up to lead shipping in Sweden. I'm joining up with a few friends who are driving a 67 a Mustang 347 stroke at C5. 69 Dodge Super B, 412 stroke of 446 pack setup. That's the last thing that I gotta do with this thing, cause uh, the next three days, yo, weather guys, these quarter windows rattles down. Let's get some duct tape on this unit and fix it up. First stop on the trip was meeting up with the other guys over to Beers' shop. After that, we were kind of late, so we rushed our way up to the ferry so we could make it to sweep in time. So we made it to an airplane. Hot diggy dog. <laughs> so we already got a few problems. I lost the strap on the roof. Don't worry about it. We'll pinch it inside a quarter window, whatever. Nikolai is having some problem with the charging system on the Mustang. So that's great. You know, road trip stuff. And for some reason, this thing is leaking coolant out right now. But don't film that. It's not serious. <laughs>
after this fun little donut, the old oil light came on, so uh, a quick fix for that. Are we gonna get kicked out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so of course the other guys are doing donuts and tarmac, but uh, we need some gravel to test out the sugar in the Challenger. <laughs> More pop, baby. <laughs> so, guys, it's the next day, and uh, we are headed to Power Meet right now. Uh, yeah, yesterday was a. Uh, it went all right, I guess, but uh, we had a little bit of problem with the oil light coming on, and I got really damn worried for a while. But uh, you know, we still got oil pressure, and it's 400 kilometers later, so uh, it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. So we're rolling in with the other guys right now, and they are not having any problems so far. But you know how that goes. We still got to go home again, 500 kilometers. So uh, yeah, let's get to the meet, and I'll catch catch you guys there. Yes, sir. You are currently shaking on a 1970 Dodge Challenger steering wheel. Don't worry about it, it's fine. We are headed into the meet right now, and there's a lot of people. A lot of people. We're gonna go in, we're gonna try to find somewhere to park, and hopefully we're not gonna get rained out like crazy, because uh, there's a lot of black clouds out here. So, uh, fingers crossed. The weather was so bad, even this tent didn't want to be there. It's a beautiful summer out here in Sweden, and uh, it's like 50 degrees and completely rainstorm right now. Everyone is drenched, nobody's enjoying the meat because everyone is just, you know, cruising around because it's bad weather, but uh, it's a vibe, you know what I mean? It's still cool. So uh, we're probably gonna jump in the cars now as well and just go for a round because it's like a big airport or whatever, so you can just cruise around all the cars and I guess watch it as a moving car show, I suppose. So, yeah, let's let's go cruise. I'm really cold. I can feel my nipples. <laughs> Funny enough, I ran into a Challenger with the same color code as mine, FF4 Light Green. As you can see, 
50 years in the Texas sun has kind of changed that color a little bit, but it does still look alike. So as you guys can see, we are out at the meet right now, and it is loud as fuck, okay? So this is raga culture, loud music and jumping on cars. up in the window and uh, the temperature is I don't know like 10 degrees hotter than it usually is so I'm pretty sure like the heater core element itself is just pouring out right now it's dripping a little bit on the floorboard as well so that's great I think I'm just gonna take two vice grips pinch it right on the hoses for the heater core and call it good because that's how we do it not fix it the right way <laughs> But so far, the challenge has been doing freaking great. Miles per gallon, terrible. I've been doing the same miles per gallon as uh, Nikolai and his yellow Mustang, I think. It's terrible with this rear end, because we're cruising at like 3,000 RPM doing, I don't know, 65, 70 on the highway? So that sucks. And then also, it uses more oil and fuel. Oh no, that's no good. This one out Land 6 is, uh, yeah, it's probably eating a quart per 500 kilometers of thing or something like that. So I'll update you guys in a bit. All the windows are down right now because we got sun out, but otherwise we're gonna have to tape them up again. Yeah, what a terrible deal. 